your voice. So, hi, my name is Paul. I use he pronouns. I'm in the Office of Transfer Student Success. I advise the Crimson Transfer Honor Society if anyone has any questions. But really, the time is Christina, and she's amazing. She works in the Counseling Center, and we're going to do the Red Flag, Green Flag project. So I'm just going to let Christina take it away. Wonderful. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Paul said, my name is Christina. I'm a clinical social worker, and I work at the University Counseling Center. It's a real pleasure to be with you all here today. Um, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing with the Red Flag Green Plan Project. And please, please know that as we go about our time together, I want this very much to be a dialogue and a conversation. So uh, all of these workshops, I think, are made much more interesting when we hear from you uh, and we can, we can have, a, have a talk about it. So the Red Flag Green Flag Project was started a few years ago. Uh, yes, go ahead. Thank you. A few years ago. Anyway, and it came about because I, um, as part of the duties that I have at the Counseling Center, I run a group for uh, trauma survivors. And um, I've been in the field of working in interpersonal violence, working with survivors for since I started my career 26 years ago. Um, and one of the things that I'm always struck by is it seems how little we talk about the issue of interpersonal violence. Um, in our society today, our mainstream society, we don't tend to talk about what are the signs of healthy behaviors in relationships and what are the signs of unhealthy behaviors? And by relationships, I want to be clear, this can cross a variety of different scenarios. So certainly we'll be talking about dating relationships, but it can also apply to friendships, family relationships, <laughs> classmates, roommates, etc. So the mission of the FLAG project is really to engage our campus community, so students, faculty, and staff in this dialogue about interpersonal violence. And the way that we do it is through the creation of an art exhibit. It's a communal art exhibit that all of you will be participating in this year. So um, as part of our workshop, we're going to be creating red and green flags. And as you can see here, I have them. Uh, our green flags, this is going to be more towards the end of our workshop. We're going to be writing down signs of healthy behaviors in relationships. And then on the red flags, we'll have signs of unhealthy behaviors. And then this exhibit is going to go up by the union. So uh, on the other side of the union from where we're at, you know that ridge of grass there that's over by the tables? So the exhibit will go up there. One side will be red flags, the other side will be green. And um, I think it has quite a visual impact uh, when you're walking by. So hopefully we'll have a conversation about that really today, but uh, in the weeks to come, uh, when the exhibit goes up, which will be the week after fall break, um, we'll get a chance to see your flags there along with many others. And I wanna encourage you to invite your friends and your classmates to go and check it out so you too can continue the conversation. Okay, so when we're looking at this topic of healthy and unhealthy behaviors, um, as I mentioned earlier, we just don't do a very good job of talking about it in general. And even more so, what I'd like to suggest is that oftentimes we tend to romanticize unhealthy behaviors. So in mainstream media, we oftentimes look at behaviors that even on, from a legal sense, you could qualify as uh, something like stalking. We often romanticize that and see as a sign of like, oh, that person really loves the other one. No, it's really not love. <laughs> it's a little bit worse than that. So um, when we're looking at defining what is healthy and unhealthy behaviors, I take a lot of my material from this wonderful organization that's called One Love. And One Love was started in 2012 um, in Virginia. And sadly, they, um, the organization was born out of a tragedy. So um, in 2011, Yardley Love was a student at the University of Virginia, and she was in, in a relationship where violence had occurred, dating, dating violence situation. And what ended up happening, sadly, is her boyfriend murdered her. That was the culmination of that relationship. And so Yardley Love's mother, as a way, I think, not only of coping with her grief, um, but also very much wanting to provide uh, a platform 
for having uh, college students engage with this information created one month. And its mission is to do what we're doing today, to be able to have conversations about this really important topic, um, to be able to have all of us work informed about what to look for in both healthy and unhealthy relationships. So that's what One Love is about. Uh, thank you, Paul. And if you ever get a chance to go check it out online, highly, highly encourage that. Okay, so One Love has created here a list of kind of not top 10, but 10 signs of healthy versus unhealthy behaviors. One thing I want to note before we dive into the particulars with each one of these is that um, knowing that we'll all engage in one form or the other with some of these behaviors. Not all of them all of the time, but I do oftentimes have uh, have clients of mine and or audience participants say, well, you know, I have been jealous sometimes. Or maybe I said this one thing sometimes. Please know that this isn't about a gotcha moment. Like, ha, ah, I don't know, you did this thing. Now it's more like, Let's recognize our humanity, but also learn from it. Learn from mistakes. Learn about what is healthy and what is unhealthy behaviors. So interestingly, as we look at these uh, 10 signs, I can share with you that um, through the years, I've had the opportunity to work with survivors of uh, interpersonal violence from quite literally around the world, um, pretty much every continent. And what is Surprising and still shocking to me today is that these signs of unhealthy behaviors cross all boundaries. They know no limits. So these unhealthy behaviors know no, no deference to socioeconomic level, uh, religion, race, ethnicity, country, language, it knows no boundaries. And interestingly, too, a lot of those unhealthy behaviors. I've seen and have my clients report back to me are typical across the board. So that's kind of an interesting thing to be curious about. Um, when we're looking at these behaviors, I also really want to acknowledge the complexity of these relationships. So when a relationship ends up being unhealthy, it never starts that way. So that's something to really make note of, right? So in unhealthy relationships in the beginning, there's typically what we call a honeymoon phase. And that honeymoon phase is one in which it's a really exciting time. It's a time usually when the two people fall in love with each other. If we're talking about dating relationships, um, it tends to be a bit of like the whirlwind romance kind of thing. People are really excited about being with each other. All of that is well and good. I wish for all of you the experience of falling in love and having that excitement. I think that's a lovely part of life. However, having said that, even in that initial honeymoon phase, we start to see some of the characteristics over here on the unhealthy side. And what we mean by that is, for example, a period of intensity. So uh, in these relationships, what ends up developing is this kind of sense of intensity, like I want to spend every minute of every day with you all the time. And it's presented in this very romantic way, like because I'm so into you, because I'm just falling in love with you, I'm going to spend every minute of every day. And on a surface level, again, you could romanticize that. But, oh, that's, that's really sweet. That's pretty really sweet. Uh, but what tends to happen as the abuse develop is that intensity is phrased as that real love and caring. But it demands that the other person start to leave behind a lot of the other aspects of their life, be it relationships with other people, friendships, family relationships, as well as the flight home, you know? So there's that period of high intensity versus what? Well, when we're looking at the signs of healthy relationship, there's a getting to know you phase and then things develop at a comfortable pace where both people feel like, yeah, this is good. I can get to know you over time. And then we can continue to grow and, and know each other better, but it can happen at a more regular rhythm to it, in which both parties are still able to engage in other aspects of their life. Um, I'm actually gonna stay on this one for a little while. Thank you, Paul. 
So let's take a look at some of these other signs because what you'll see is a lot of them end up kind of crossing over and uh, in intersecting with one another. So as we're talking a little bit about the intensity, later on you'll see some more of the possessiveness and uh, some of the, the manipulation. So for example, one of the things that happens is a red flag in an unhealthy relationship is bit by bit, the support system of the victim gets eroded away. And it's presented again in this very sort of idealized romantic, quote unquote, loving manner. What do I mean by that? So for example, uh, let's say uh, we're talking about uh, one person who has a standard date with their friends on a Friday night. And the, the abusive partner will say something like, why do you have to go to that? Because that takes time away from us. Why don't we just have our time together? Which again, in balance, every now and then, that's fine. But what tends to happen in these unhealthy relationships is that kind of gaining speed and that gaining momentum. So then it's like, no, don't go to that on Friday night, but then also don't go see your family on Saturday or don't go to dinner on Sunday. Why? Because that takes away time from us. So see how that kind of ends up being portrayed as sort of like an us versus them. And what tends to happen in these relationships is let's say one partner says, you know what, I, I do, I really want to go out. I'm going to go out with my friends on Friday. And then in the Friday night, there's 10 million phone books up, 10 million texts. <clears throat> what are you doing? Who are you with? Why are you still there? Why haven't you called me? You need to get in touch with me now. We need to know where you are. Whoa. <laughs> Now we're starting to look at more and more of those red flags. What also tends to happen is after the person comes back from Friday, there's a blow up. There tends to be a fight. So there tends to be like, hey, why did you have to do that? Look at how you come back. You're acting in a certain way that gets in the way of us having a relationship. So in order to maintain the peace, what ends up happening is the other person who did go out Friday night will say, you know what, I'll just skip Friday nights. That way we avoid conflict, we avoid the blow up, we'll stay you know, together, we'll enjoy our time together. So to add to that complexity, when that happens, that the person engages in abusive behavior tends to return back to being the person they fell in love with, the partner fell in love with in the beginning. So suddenly Prince or Princess Charming is back. And so loving and so caring and so loving. So then it reinforces that idea of, okay, I'll just work in Friday night because that way we keep the peace and the person I fell in love with comes back. Does that make sense? So, questions about this, comments, anything that you want to observe or comment on regarding that? Yes. If you have a person in a relationship who um, if you're making plans all the time with them and you feel like you are taking away from their time with others, um, that abusive side of things is like only way to spend time with them, but most of them want to come out and say it. How do you go about having a conversation? Oh, that's a beautiful question. Thank you. That's great. So that will take us, just the mere fact that you asked that, I absolutely love because it's a sign of healthy behaviors. <laughs> uh, and what I mean by that is having an open communication of what that could look like. You'd be like, hey, I want to make sure and I want to check in with you. Is this feeling like a comfortable pace for you? Like, I really love spending time with you, but I also want to respect your outside activities and your friendships with other people. So is, is it working for you? What we're doing here is this good? Because if it's not, please know I'm open to hearing other lives. Versus like, well, don't you tell me that something's wrong, you know? <laughs> like you can pose it as like, yeah, whatever, but how do you feel about it? <laughs> Which is obviously not. Yeah, great question, thank you. Other questions, comments? Okay. Um, so when we're looking at the healthy side of things, 
you know, again, wanting to kind of compare and contrast these two, notice how with things like independence, respect, equality, um, with those signs, the what ultimately I think this boils down to is being able for both parties to respect the other person has a life outside of their relationship. And that that can be okay. It doesn't have to be threatening to the partnership. You know, so that outside involvement, be it with sports, be it with extracurricular activities, family and friends, that doesn't have to threaten the intimacy of a relationship. Both, all of those things can be held and held in respect for one another. So in healthy relationships, that's openly talked about and that's understood. <laughs> One of the things that it's interesting to hear uh, when I did this workshop last uh, week, one of the things that was mentioned is just the idea of having fun. <laughs> so relationships should have fun. They should be fun and they should be kind. And sometimes what develops, I'm not to say that it's that way all the time, please don't. <laughs> But at least all the time, right? You want to be able to enjoy your time with your partner. You need to be able to have a good time. As unhealthy relationships develop, those periods of fun, lightheartedness, enjoyment, tend to get fewer and fewer and fewer. And it's more and more about managing conflict and trying to appease the other person so that they will stay calm. Um, so here's another classic sign as we're looking at uh, unhealthy relationship and it speaks to those uh, remaining items on the list there. Again, in my experience of working with, with victims from around the world, here's the classic formula that each person engages in abusive behavior will say, I wouldn't have to do X, fill in the blank, if you hadn't done Y, fill in the blank. Now you can look at that and be like, well, I can be right. I can think about times when I, you know, I reacted in this way and the other person did that. Sure, that's again our humanity, right? But when it is in conjunction with all these other signs, what that phrase is really saying is, what does that say phrase really say? If I would have done X, you hadn't done Y. Whose responsibility is who's there? What does that say? What do you think? So I'm not responsible for what I did because somehow you're responsible for my behavior. So in this room, the only person, and not just this room, in my entire life, the only person that I can 100% control is speaking to you right now. So all I got to see. And I am 100% responsible for me all of the time. <laughs> so what's, what's hard in these relationships is we constantly hear this, yeah, well, you know what? I wouldn't have had to smash your phone if you would only deleted Sam's number like I asked you to. Okay. Then it's coming with, again, a deflecting of responsibility. I'm not responsible for smashing the phone. You are because you didn't do what I asked you to do, right? Well, I wouldn't have had to uh, wait outside of your class and make sure that you were there if you had just been honest with me about where you were going to be when I asked you where you were. Okay, so see if you see how that is phrased, and if you get that in conjunction with. Some of these other behaviors, along with moments that, again, the person returns to being fun and loving and the person you fell in love with, you hear that enough, you start to believe it. Yeah. And then when we're looking at things like belittling and guilting, manipulation, you'll also start to hear behaviors or phrases that just, well, that was just stupid. That was just stupid. Okay. Um, more little little digs like, wow, so you're gonna wear that? Why are you gonna wear that? What do you have makes you look? So you start to get these behaviors that trickle in in addition to times that are good. You see how confusing it can be? Any questions or comments about that? Okay. 
Um, my last thing I'll mention before I start calling you like <laughs> in this deflecting responsibility, I just want to contrast that with taking responsibility. So in healthy relationships, and again, these are all behaviors that we continuously, all of us can work on. When we make mistakes, as inevitably we will, because we're human beings, uh, a healthy uh, apology looks like this. I'm sorry, I did X. I can see it really hurt you. Take responsibility for that, and I give you a sincere apology. That's it. And you learn from it, and you move on. Here's what happens in the other way. Yeah, well, I guess I'm sorry, but they all but in that sentence. But I wouldn't have done that if you hadn't done this. But that's not an apology. That's just like the responsibility. So, questions, comments? Yes. Is it basically just like the you and I students, like just thinking? So, Could you say a little more? I yeah. You. Yeah. But it's not that that way. to correct your behavior. Like, you're just like blaming is being you and it's being you. Like, open up and can be way more like healthy. Like, uh, like, can establish like some type of ability to use I. Beautifully said. That's right. So, um, let's, let's kind of play that out, right? So, how will this come across if I'm upset about something and I I use the you statements, which would look like this? Yeah, well, you never listen to me. You're always on your phone. You never try to talk. You're never looking at me when I'm raising my concerns. You're always saying that it's somebody else's fault. You're the one who you, you, you. How would you even feel, do you think, if you were hearing that? That's it. Yep. And what happens when we become defensive? <laughs> yep, I would like to use the sign like you, you go on the defense in return. And so what ends up with that is you stop listening. You stop listening. Now, see how this comes across differently. If I were to say, you know, I'd like to talk with you, I end up feeling like you're not really listening to me when you're looking at your phone while I'm talking. So I end up feeling kind of small or unimportant. How does that come across? Put it differently? This will identify the behavior, but it's identifying the behavior specific to this one context and the impact that behavior has on me. If I use the you statement, you never listen, you're never attentive, you don't do X, Y, Z, you're talking about a global statement about that person. And it's really hard to not get defensive when you feel like you're being blind. So the you, you use, I think you just get the other person guarded and then you stop talking to them. Right. And stop listening. Okay. Thank you, Paul. We're now finally ready. <laughs> We're actually going to skip this because I want to spend a little bit more time on uh, the case scenarios. So, uh, yes, we can keep going through that. That's just the instructions. So, uh, the following is going to be a list of different cases. They cross, as I said earlier, all sorts of different scenarios. So, it isn't meant to be the beginning of relationships, but it'll be family, it'll be friends, it'll be classmates, et cetera. So what I'd like you to do is have you all call out what number you would like to see, and then um, we'll read it out loud together, and I'm going to invite you to think about which of the healthy or unhealthy behaviors is identified in the case study. Does that make sense? Okay, so who would like to get us started? You can just call out a number, be it like healthy relationships for 200. Mm -hmm. Don't be shy. Say healthy relationships too for four hundred. All right, this, excellent. This one, Love it. yes, Help. excellent. <laughs> Great. All right, so Ayana, sorry, the letter is kind of small, but I'll read it out loud. Ayana tells her boy, her friends Bella and Lisa, that she was going on a date with Brad. 
but asks them not to tell anyone. The next day, Bella lets the secret out and everyone at school knows. When Ayana finds out what Bella did, she speaks to her about how she feels. Bella acknowledges her mistake and promises never to betray her again. Which of the 10 healthy relationship behaviors is this? And again, there's, I think a lot of them that intercept, you know, from that list that we were looking at. What would you all say? Yes. Honestly, she didn't deny that she did it. Beautiful. Beautiful honesty. Any other ideas? Yes. Beautiful. Love it. Yeah, I'd say both of those are correct. You want to hit the answer key? Um, there we go. Yeah. And again, I think I don't know that there's just one answer to these because I do think honestly comes hand in hand with that paper card. Beautiful. All right. Uh, what else? Which one? Who wants to go next? Yes. Healthy relationships. One or two. Either one. Okay, we'll do this one. <laughs> All right. Darius has a huge crush on Adriana, but is nervous to tell their mutual friend Jalen. Darius decides to tell Jalen, and Jalen never mentions a word of it to Adriana. Which of the ten healthy relationship behaviors is this? I'm sorry. Trustworthy. Trustworthy, yes. Yeah, I think that is an excellent answer. Let's see what we've got. Yeah. Yay. Exactly. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Good. Okay. I think we should try some unhealthy ones too, right? So who wants to yell one out? Two uh, unhealthy relationships, one for 500. 500. Okay, I'm going. I like it. Okay. Um, every week, Julia and Elena go to a park to hang out after school. When Julia finds that Elena sometimes hangs out at their park with other friends, she gets super jealous. Julia says, I don't care if you hang out with other people, but this park is our place. How, how could you go with somebody else? Which of the 10 unhealthy relationship behaviors is this? What is possessive? Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. nice. Very nice. Very nice. Good. Good. Unless you go more. The general one column. Yeah. Which what number? Two four hundred. Uh, right. This is a mutual and voluntary agreement between two people to do something that both people want to do. We're not saying what it is, but we <laughs> they're both agreeing to do it. So what term best describes this? Mutual pace. Mutual pace. I love that. I love that. Okay, mutual pace. Consent. Consent. Is that what you're gonna say? Yes. Again, I think both of those go very much hand in hand. Yeah. Nice. Well done. Well done. Exactly. Good. Good. Other ones. Another category. General five hundred. General five hundred. Okay. Let's go. When something bad happens to someone and others consider it their fault instead of the person who did the bad thing. What term best describes this? Again, something bad happens to someone and others consider it their fault instead of the person who did the bad thing. Taking the blame. Yeah. Yep, yep. Taking the blame, the like victim blame. Yep, yeah. beautiful. Well done, we've done you guys, really good, okay. Let's do maybe a couple of more, and then I want to have a little bit of time for actually making the flags. So, uh, shout out for whichever one category you would like. Yeah. Another unhealthy relationships two for five hundred. All right, excellent. Okay, Rodrigo and Tony have known each other for a while. Tony knows to never talk about Rodrigo's friends because Rodrigo has a tendency to get really angry over small things. Tony is used to it and doesn't mind this behavior. 
Which of the 10 unhealthy relationship behaviors is this? Is there hostility or reactivity? Nice, hostility, reactivity, okay. Anything else? I think those, those are good ones. Yeah, let's see what the answer is. Well, it doesn't say. Yeah, it says it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, perhaps one last one. Who wants to go for that? We do general for 200. General yes. 200, okay. True or false? Abuse can only be present in a relationship if one person is physically harmed by a different. False. False. Okay. So let's just talk about that a little bit more. Um, what other types of abuse are there in the village? <laughs> You didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. What other types of abuse aside from physical? Verbal. Verbal. Yeah. Emotional. Yeah. 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 Um. And again, just to make sure we got the content. So, with emotional abuse, what do you think that looks like? What could be some words to describe emotional abuse? Um. Uh, I, I think that like uh. Or involved, or at least I kind of like giving them the blame and all this kind of the injury that I've got up with that emotional. Absolutely. You have to do it. Agreed. Yeah. And that's, I think, in today, uh, today's dialogue, I often hear that term gaslighting, and that's an important part of that as well. Yeah. The gaslighting aspect of not taking ownership or responsibility for your own. Yeah. Good. Wonderful, y'all. This is great, great, great discussion. Okay. Um, I think that, yeah, I think we're good there. Thank you, Paul. Okay, so as part of the Black Project, when I'm going to ask